Cholesterol-derived metabolites are impacted by aging. For example, cholesterol is converted into steroid hormones, which decline during aging. Conversely, cholesterol is also converted into bile acids, which increase during aging. But steroids and bile acids aren't the only metabolites that are derived from cholesterol. And in today's video, we'll take a look at cholesterol esters. So what are cholesterol esters? In the presence of fatty acid 22,6, which is a fatty acid that has 22 carbons and six double bonds, this is also known as the fish oil fatty acid, DHA. And when that's bound to uh, coenzyme A, so when that DHA is activated, in the presence of the ACAT protein, which is acyl-CoA cholesterol acyl transferase, we have a cholesterol ester as shown here. We can see cholesterol on one side bound to DHA. So this is the DHA cholesterol ester. So why are cholesterol esters important? In today's video, we'll take a look at how levels of cholesterol esters change during aging, which cholesterol esters are related to health, which cholesterol esters are indicative of youth or an older epigenetic age, and can we track and optimize cholesterol esters? So first, let's take a look at age-related changes. And that's what we'll see here. On the x-axis, we've got the difference in lipid levels per year. And in this case, lipid levels are cholesterol esters, or CE. And on the other side of the y-axis, we've got an age range going from 30 years old to older than 90 year olds. I won't focus on the older than 90 year olds as that group is only seven people. So this is a study of about 4,200 people from 30 to 89 years old. And then we can see that cholesterol esters are relatively high at younger ages, at least within the 30 to 59 year age range and comparatively are lower in 80 year olds or 80 to 89 year olds. But there are many different fatty acids and correspondingly many different cholesterol esters. So it may not be wise to look at all cholesterol esters as a group as some may incre increase during aging and some may decline during aging. So with, so with that in mind, how are specific cholesterol esters related to health and epigenetic age? So let's start off by taking a look at how specific cholesterol esters are related to health. And to do that, we'll look at associations between metabolites with all-cause mortality risk, as shown here. This study included more than 11,000 people with an average age of 54 years at baseline, with a median follow-up time of 23 years, and it included an analysis of 243 metabolites. So starting at the baseline assessment for those metabolites, how many people were alive or dead with a median follow-up time of 23 years later, and then which metabolites were associated with an increased risk of all-cause mortality and a decreased risk for all-cause mortality. And all-cause mortality risk is shown on the x-axis as the log HR, that's the log of the hazard ratio. To the right of zero, we've got metabolites associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, so higher levels of the metabolite are associated with an increased risk. And then to the left of zero, we've got higher levels of metabolites being associated with a decreased all-cause mortality risk. Now I know that this is a cholesterol ester focused video, but note that the metabolite that's uh, significantly associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk is the amino acid serine. And if you're familiar with the channel, I've been supplementing with serine as a means to try to reduce homocysteine, which then raises the question, will supplementing with serine increase circulating levels as one potential strategy to potentially reduce all-cause mortality risk? So I currently have data for three tests. This is using Iolo's at-home metabolomics kit, where I supplemented with two, four, and six grams of serum per day prior to the April, May, and July of 2023 tests. So how did that impact plasma levels of serine? For the first test at two grams per day, we can see that plasma serine was about 170 micromolar, and I didn't get an increase with four grams per day as plasma levels of serine went down to 110 micromolar. Now, I don't know if that's normal variation of the test or just it wasn't that serine isn't able to increase plasma levels of serine. Serine supplementation isn't able to increase plasma levels of serine. Well, the argument against plasma levels of serine increasing in, in response to supplementing is with six grams per day, I got a very small increase to 175 micromolar, which suggests that Supplementing with serine may not increase circulating levels at least within the two to six gram per day range. Now, I don't know if what my baseline serine levels were yet without supplementation, so I'll need that data to compare, but at least at higher doses, um, that doesn't raise plasma levels of serine, at least in my case. All right, so back to the cholesterol ester story, where we can see that 22.6 DHA cholesterol ester is associated with a significantly reduced all-cause mortality risk. Conversely, the 16-1, so 16 carbons, one double bond cholesterol ester, is significantly associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. 
So here we can see two different cholesterol esters are associated with all-cause mortality risk in opposite directions, which kind of supports the rationale to not look at cholesterol esters as one group, especially in terms of uh, aging-related changes, as they may have divergent effects on all-cause mortality risk and maybe even epigenetic age, which, which we'll take a look at uh, in a minute. So how are these cholesterol esters, specifically CE161 and 22.6, related to epigenetic age? And to assess epigenetic age, we'll take a look at DNA-M, so DNA methylation or epigenetic age for using the phenoage test and the Grimage test. And the importance of these two epigenetic clocks is that they are gold standard epigenetic clocks for their associations with all-cause mortality risk. And if you missed that video, I'll put it in the right corner. All right, so back to our question, are those two cholesterol esters related to epigenetic age? And for that, we'll take a look at associations for epigenetic clocks, these epigenetic clocks, with cholesterol esters as shown here. Now, we've got a bunch of blue and red dots on the screen, so what does that, what does that mean? The red dots are for higher cholesterol ester levels that's associated with an older epigenetic age, so red going in the wrong direction. And then the blue dots, which I would have labeled as green dots if it was my study, uh, just so you know that green is going in the right direction, red light, green light, Green, higher cholesterol ester levels are associated with a younger epigenetic age. All right, so what about our two cholesterol esters, 16-1 and 22-6? So starting with 16-1, we go to 16 carbons there, and then one double bond, and we can see that it has a red dot. And that's for DNA M phenoage. What about for Grim age? So we can see exactly the same data. So we've got replication not, not just across the epigenetic clocks, but from the other study in terms of all-cause mortality risk. So we can see that the 16-1 cholesterol ester isn't just associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, it's also associated with an older epigenetic age. So what about the 22-6 uh, cholesterol ester, DHA cholesterol ester? So we go to 22 carbons there, then six double bonds, and we can see it has a blue dot. In other words, the DHA cholesterol ester is also associated with a younger, epigen younger epigenetic age, in addition to being associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. All right, so there's a bunch of other blue and red dots on the screen. So what are they? We can see that 15-0 decreased all-cause mortality risk, and similarly 17-0 is associated with a decreased all-cause mortality risk, which then raised the question, can we track cholesterol esters, not just 16-1 and 22-6, but 15-0, 17-0, and maybe others? And also, what's my data? So first, cholesterol esters can be tracked using an at-home metabolomic kit. And that's the kit here, that's the IOLO kit. And if you're familiar with the channel, you've seen me make videos using this kit for taurine and polyamines, which extend lifespan and rodents, kynurenine and tryptophan as metabolites of the de novo NAD synthesis pathway, the fish oil fatty acids EPA and DHA, which decline during aging and lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, metabolite ratios as an index of oxidative stress. And in addition to these metabolites, the kit has more than 500 metabolites, including 22 cholesterol esters. So if you're interested in the kit, discount link in the video's description. All right, so it also, of those 22 cholesterol esters, many of them are younger associated cholesterol esters based on the phenoage and Grimage data that I just showed. And I have data for three tests, and within those tests, we can see that cholesterol ester 22.6, the DHA cholesterol ester, is in this younger associated cholesterol, cholesterol ester group, and then there are six others, which then raises the question, what's optimal? Well, when considering that younger, uh, these cholesterol esters are associated with a younger epigenetic age, I think it makes the most sense to avoid an age-related decrease for younger associated cholesterol esters. In other, words, keep, in other words, keep them high because relatively higher levels are associated with a younger epigenetic age. So how well am I doing at that? So for the first test, they were relatively high, 259 micromolar as a sum of a group. And I think it's valuable to look at not just one cholesterol ester, but as a group, uh, especially a group that's going in the same direction as listed on this uh, table. So 259 micromolar for the first test, but then it went in the wrong direction for the next, 193 micromolar, and then even worse for the third test, 159 micromolar. So this is data that's definitely going in the wrong direction. Now, where the story gets interesting, at least for me, is for test number one, my NAD levels were 30 micromolar as I sent blood to Ginfinity on the day, same day as this test. Now, 30 micromolar is above my baseline of 20 to 25 micromolar, but it isn't as high as 
for test number three, where my NAD levels were 59 micromolar, uh, as encouraged by nicotinic acid supplementation. Now, when considering that my NAD levels doubled above 30, in conjunction with that decline for younger associated, younger epigenetic age associated cholesterol esters, at least for this group, that would maybe suggest additional evidence that going too high for NAD may be bad for epigenetic age. And I showed that story in two videos ago uh, in terms of my Dunedin pace looking like a crazy outlier at 0.98 in conjunction with having my NAD levels on that day at six, even higher, 67 micromolar. So in terms of what's optimal for NAD, that's a different uh, a story for a different day, a different video, but 60 micromolar may be too high. All right, what about older associated cholesterol esters? So the Iolo kit has two, including the 16-1 cholesterol ester that I've talked about a lot in this video, but also the 23 cholesterol ester. And just like we did for the younger associated cholesterol esters, what's optimal? So for the older associated, older epigenetic, older epigenetic age associated cholesterol esters, I think it makes the most sense to avoid an age-related increase as relatively higher levels are associated with an older epigenetic age. So how well am I doing at that? And again, this is very prelim preliminary data. It's only three tests. I'm still gathering enough data because I don't know what my normal range for these cholesterol esters is. I don't know what's correlated with it to try to uh, push it towards the higher end of my range or the lower end of my range yet. So I would, I would take these data with a grain of salt, but this is what the data is so far. For the first test, these two, the sum of these two older associated cholesterol esters was 14 micromolar. Somehow it declined. Again, whether that's normal variability or whether I did something in the diet or supplements, reduced it, I don't know yet. Went down to about seven micromolar and then back up to 14 micromolar. So again, for the older associated cholesterol esters, the goal is to keep them relatively low. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics as a measurement of cholesterol esters and many other groups, NED quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, or microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health as they include ApoB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've, got, we've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.